this is Archive of 12, and today we have a new Fable song. This is a Deku song. It's not his first one. In fact, I don't even know how many Fable songs uh, feature Deku at this point. Uh, three, four, possibly, maybe even a little bit more. I don't, I don't know, honestly, but that's okay, because Deku is a character that inspires a lot of creative writing, so like, I'm excited for this. Uh, this one is called Fall. And it's got a little A and all caps otherwise. So I don't know if that's it's if that's meant to represent Fable in the way he spells his name or if that is indicative of what we're going to listen to. I don't know. Um, link will be in the description below if you want to watch that my commentary because it will be pausing and we'll be talking about it. And without further ado, I guess let's get started. I wasn't expecting a Fable song to ever sound like this. What is going on with this instrumental? Hold on. What, <laughs> what just happened? Okay, so we get like this little, like this, this fast paced little like synthetic I don't even know what that is, like a synthetic hi-hat or something. And then we get like randomly the the ring noise for picking up a ring in Sonic the Hedgehog. What? Like the the way this song begins sounds like it should be the song uh, the like uh, like a a song that you'd hear in like the legend of zelda breath of the wild or something like that i don't know why that's just the first thing that comes to mind when i listen to this beginning this beginning opening section and i'm still trying to figure out where the the sonic ring comes in for that After we get past all that weirdness, though, he kicks you in the teeth with an incredible, astronomical, no-holds-barred, explosive, like, rock anthem. I don't even know. Like, we're only 41 seconds into this song. I don't know how to react to this. But, oh my god, just like... I've been blasted by, like, by three confounding things that somehow got put together and they kind of work. The rock section, this section here, which I'm guessing is probably the chorus, is phenomenal. I'm just really, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm wrapping my head around that and ignoring the sound effect, the ring, and the intro right now because I want to focus on like what Fable's doing. What he is doing right now, though, is incredible. This song is screaming hope. That's the vibe that I'm getting from this, this entire track, which is a far cry from like, I just want to say, uh, to check something, because I don't want to be wrong about this. 
Uh, bu 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 his last. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. The last time he covered Deku was Lost. If I remember correctly, I think, yeah, that, that looks like it was the last time he covered Deku. And that was Vigilante Deku, which was filled with a little bit of angst and some complicated emotions. This one here is filled with hope. That's the vibe that I'm getting from from uh, from fall here is it's just. It's inspirational. It's it has a driving like message behind it that's basically saying I am not going to st I, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to allow my opponents to see me fall. That's that's and and, and he's already said that maybe not maybe in different words, but like he's already said that, but just like the entire thing is just like, I'm not I'm not going to just lay down. I am going to be the new uh, a hero of peace, symbol of peace. I am a hero. And I love that because when compared to Lost, um, Lost, it was almost the opposite. Like, he was a hero, but he felt like he was a neat, uh, like, he, Fable covered uh, Deku in Lost. Because it, 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 or not because, um, he did it in a way that made it feel like Deku had lost his purpose. He'd lost himself. He was doing it out of necessity and not because he wanted to do the right thing. That's the vibe that I got from Lost. I've heard it many, many times. And it, it, it always strikes me as, um, like he, like Deku isn't doing this. Um, he's doing it almost selfishly. He's not doing it selflessly like he was before. He's what he was doing it, uh, either because he failed. No, I haven't seen anything past season three of My Hero Academia. I think I've I've seen like one or two episodes into season four, and it's basically all I've seen. So like, I know of the Vigilante Deku song, or I, I of of the arc. Excuse me, the Vigilante Deku arc. Um, but I don't know context for it. I'm just gaining what I have learned from the nerd core scene and what I've seen in the AMVs. But from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've gathered, um, the way Fable decided to cover Lost was like, Deku was lost. Deku didn't know who he was. He didn't know how to continue on being the individual that he wanted to be. This feels like a return to form. Like, you know, Deku has found himself. He's managed to find what he was missing before. And now he's not going to fall in that same into that same position, into that same dark despair, that, that same pit of despair again. He's not going to do that. And I love the fact that you can capture that through the vibe of this song's instrumental and through the heroic, like display that Fable's putting in his voice. I can't give up or let you go. This life's the only thing I know. I'm always out of fall. Yeah. If I change you, then maybe I'll change me. Tell me who you want to be. It's not too late to stop me from I think one of the things that's impressing me right now with uh, the way that uh, Fable has chosen to write this song is it's giving me two specific superhero vibes. It's giving me vibes of both Batman and Spider-Man. And I'm not just talking about because of the fact that uh, of, of Deku and his and his quirk or his power or whatever. Um, it's specifically the way that Fable decided to write that specific section, talking about how it's not too late to make amends. It's not too late for us to still be friends. Like, distinctly, 
out of all the superheroes that I can think of, Batman and Spider-Man are the two fundamental ones that are about hope in redeeming individuals that are um, not necessarily viewed well by society. Now, I'm not saying that Spider-Man is always like that, but there are plenty of individuals that Spider-Man has attempted to reason with and try to make amends with or redeem. Eddie Brock being probably the most prominent, Eddie Brock and Venom, but also uh, there have been multiple times, Shocker, uh, there have been multiple times that uh, he's t uh, many, many times with black with a black cat, both in romance and out of romance. Um, Craven the Hunter, a couple of times. Morbius, especially. Like, uh, super, like Spider-Man uh, is an individual that, like, and I think I believe he's done it with uh, with uh, Scorpion and Doc Ock many times too. So, like. The only real character that he's attempted to and truly failed with has been Green Goblin. Um, but he's always attempted to have that hope that maybe these guys can can reform. Maybe these guys can can be rehabilitated. Batman's the same way. There's a reason why he doesn't send most of his most insane individuals to prison because they would most likely be put on, you know, death row. Uh, he sends them to Arkham Asylum to get treatment. Now, is that the best place for them? I don't know. They break out a lot. But he he is purposely sending them to an asylum so that that way they can reform themselves, so they can get help. Whether they take the help or not is entirely up to them, but he is purposely sending, uh, like, trying to get them sent to Arkham Asylum so that they can become better members of society. Both of those specific heroes are what Deku is reminding me of right now with the way that uh, Fable is writing this song. And I think that is uh, amazing and incredible because I know that Deku gets compared to, especially Spider-Man, quite often. Um, I just think that the that I can, the fact that I can draw those parallels is, is really, really, really good and really fun. Um, and it just, I don't know, heightens my enjoyment a little bit more because... That means that you don't necessarily can you don't have to view this as a Deku song. This is just a general hero's anthem. You can apply this to Batman, maybe make it a little more broody, not nearly as like upbeat as this one is, but like take the lyrics, create a different instrumental. You could probably make this a Batman song. As it stands, you could easily just straight up apply this to Spider-Man. Um potentially Captain America as well. Uh, there's some argument for that. So like, this is just like a general hero's anthem for what a hero should be like. And Deku is like embodying that. Deku stands up there with those famous Marvel and DC characters because of his desire to inspire others to be better. And I think My Hero Academia has done a fantastic job of giving us an anime version of like Marvel and DC characters that we can truly look to and say, while these characters may or may not be able to contend with them on power scaling, they can definitely contend with them on heart. And I think that's the important part of it, about being a hero. I think that's the important part of what makes Deku so successful as a character.
And the other thing that 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 song uh, makes me think of in regards to general superheroes as well is the desire to never, ever quit, which is that's probably like the biggest and most obvious part of this song. Um, But it's also one of the like best examples of of like the the hero genre. Um, and I feel like this, yeah, like I said, this is just a general hero's anthem. Whether you're applying it to Deku or another specific character, this is the anthem that you should attribute all heroes to, and all heroes, true, genuine heroes, should aspire to live to. I could see myself making multiple music videos to this. Uh, I don't know whether or not I will, but I could easily see myself doing that. But anyway, thank you for joining me. I am Arkama12, and I will see you in the next video.